Daughter of a Father's Eyes is the name of the book, and half of it's biography about uh, Lucia Joyce, the daughter of James Joyce, and part of it's autobiography, uh, written by my wife, Mary. What started me off in the first place was Brian suggesting I write a script for a graphic novel, and specifically on the subject of my rather troubled relationship with my father, who, used, who was a Joycean scholar. I was vaguely aware that James Joyce had a daughter, so we had two fathers and daughters, and I thought, maybe there's an angle there that I could follow. Um, once I managed to find out about Lucia Joyce, that was what I wanted to write about. I had no idea that she'd had such a tragic life and had such a, you know, unfortunate end in spending most of her adult life in a mental institution. Eventually, I sort of pulled together the different strands of sort of gender issues, gender politics and so on, in order to um, make the two diff very different storylines, very different experiences fit together into what's apparently a coherent whole, you know. And it seems to be going down very well. It seems to be very well received, which is fantastic. So it's a very rich, has many levels and, and many, it's a many, very rewarding read, on, in addition to, of course, to being an, an addition to uh, Joyceana, to the, the very field that Mary's father was such a specialist in. I mean, he wrote a bit about Joyce for you know, Encyclopedia Britannica and standard books on Joyce that are still in use today, 20 years after, he, after his death. So Mary sort of grew up with the ghost of Joyce in the house. So it's like comparing and contrasting these two daughter-father relationships. I mean, I'd, I'd done a complete script before Brian um, started to engage with it, really. He didn't really have um, much input until we had a complete first draft. So, and, and then he um, had some more substantial suggestions to make about, you know, making certain points clearer. And so we talked about the style, what it was going to look like. And the input was both ways. You know, she was suggesting visual things all the time and I was suggesting script edits. He put the small infant me watching, for example, watching my brothers fighting and so on, where in my description, suggested description of what would be in, in the panels on, on the page, I hadn't actually put myself in the frame. <laughs> so, I mean, I think small touches like that actually make a big difference in terms of engaging the reader, in terms of you know, getting the reader to enter into this, the narrative. One of the things that Brian's done with, with uh, Daughter of Her Father's Eyes is to, again, is to devise a new technique, a new approach to his graphics to suit the more kind of intimate and autobiographical nature of, of this book um, and to create some different registers that I think you would situate the reader immediately in, in the feeling and the atmosphere that, that Mary and Brian want to evoke. Like with Bad Rat, I knew it was, it was a book that could appeal to, to a lot of people not just genre fans. So, I, like Bad Rat, I made it very clear, the storytelling, and I used quite a simple, sort of clear line style. It was very important that the reader didn't get confused between these two distinct strands. And there's even a third strand, there's a present day strand. So, basically, I mean, they're colour coded. Um, so the reader has no difficulty, you know, knowing which part they're talking about at any one, at any one moment. The present day sequences uh, are done in clear line um, style with flat colour, with definite panel borders. And uh, Mary's sequences are done in a sort of, um, well, they're, they're soft pencil line, uh, a B pencil, with a watercolour wash that's slightly sepiaed on a very textured paper. And the Joyce bits, the Lucia bits, they're done in, uh, with a dip pen um, with a blue wash on smooth paper, which gives a very different sort of quality to the, to the, to the wash. So, at a glance, you can see which, which, parts, uh, which parts are which. That's quite important because they do interweave quite a lot. Along the way also, Brian's come up with this idea that there will just be these key elements. It might be a bunch of flowers or someone's hat or coat or just a key element will be dropped into a, a soft kind of almost kind of tintiness kind of colouring. And that, I think, is a very sensitive approach. You realise you don't need to have a completely you know, brightly coloured past. In many ways, perhaps it, it, it sort of could be suggested that the 50s or that this period of, of, of life was a bit grey, literally a bit grey and a bit washed out, and that only certain kind of key things would be colourful and would be remembered as being in colour. And then, of course, he, he um, kind of tops and tails the whole thing with a, a full colour uh, sort of ep prologue and epilogue, which are set in the present day as Mary and Brian discuss the project and remember her father. Now, I read Mary's script. And I could see it was completely brilliant, the way that 
that she was cutting between her story and Lucia Joyce's story and so on and so forth. He doesn't think this, but everyone else in the world does. I think some of his very, very best drawing that he's ever done. And, it, and the whole thing hangs together completely beautifully.